Hey, so, oh my god, I really just started my video without bringing down my list of shit to talk about. Oh my god. Quarantine season, I forgot what days are. I'm sure we've all heard about the stuff going on with the Hype House and how Daisy Keach basically just came out and said that Thomas, the self-branded leader of the group, isn't the best person and doesn't give credit to other co-founders of the Hype House. So a little bit of background information in case you haven't already seen the video. Daisy and Thomas were originally like pretty much best friends or at least Daisy thought they were best friends but apparently Thomas was just using her but uh she chase and thomas i think it was just the three of them they paid for the hype house and thomas and chase basically took all the credit this isn't chase's fault by the way chase had like a manager who told him to like step up and tell them that he also contributed a lot to the hype house so thomas basically hogged all the credit and didn't give daisy or any other uh, other co-founders credit even though he put in the least amount of money into the house so she kept on speaking up well not speaking up but like confronting thomas Thomas about it because she wouldn't be in the interviews to basically give herself credit and she wouldn't be in the interviews to give the other co-founders credit so she'd keep on confronting them, she'd keep on pretending like he was gonna give them credit but he wouldn't and it got to the point where he just I guess got sick of her and decided to just exclude her from all Hype House co-founder things but he also was really controlling and he wouldn't let the other members do certain things that they thought would be good for their brand, the Hype House and like publicity and all that stuff so he was overall not a good person, very controlling, didn't give credit to the other co-founders and talk shit about Daisy behind her back who was supposed to be his best friend and eventually he unfollowed her off of all of his social medias and he hosted a meeting for all the members of the Hype House and told all of them to unfollow and block Daisy. So she's no longer part of the Hype House, she came out with all this information and she's also, well not only her but other people as well are suspecting that he is pocketing the money that the Hype House has been making for himself because he claims that the Hype House has made no money but first of all that you have so many followers and the Charlie D'Amelio is in the Hype House. Surely you're gonna get brand deals and stuff like that. But also he couldn't put a good amount of money into the Hype House because he had no money. But now all of a sudden he's got an expensive Cartier bracelet, he's got a $10,000 cat, he's thinking about buying a Tesla and all these expensive things even though the Hype House hasn't made any money. And if he was pocketing the money nobody would be able to know because he has control over all everything like the social media accounts the emails he has control over everything and he won't give anyone else like passwords or anything to it so every post that you see from the hype house is all monitored by him the only things that you see from the hype house has gone through him and since then thomas has come out and made a video of his own saying the real truth of the hype house compared to daisy's the truth about the hype house the money that was in chase's hand in his tiktok was just mine and chase's i spent every penny i had which was fifteen thousand dollars and chase put the other thirty one thousand daisy had agreed to pitch in eighteen thousand dollars and she would pay us back when her bank became available daisy then reimbursed chase thirteen thousand dollars and reimbursed me five thousand dollars so daisy didn't lie about the amount of money that she's put into the house she just needed a couple days because obviously the amount of money was quite a lot and the bank needed time to make sure that that was okay he said that he never hogged all the credit he just never what he just didn't give credit i guess he just never spoke about it but he was taking all the credit he said that daisy was next to him the entire interview whatever the fuck interview it was because i know from daisy's video that she wasn't in most of them in this video that he's talking about daisy was next to him and she didn't say anything and she also didn't talk to him afterwards about it but how awkward would it maybe she was scared to speak out but also how awkward would it have been if she did speak out and say actually stop hogging all the credit i put more money into the house than you did furthermore she also confronted you about this, the credit, giving credit thing, multiple times, I'm guessing after this interview, she has confront, she confronted you multiple times about not only her credit, like giving her credit, but also giving the other co-founders credit. Just because you're not explicitly saying, yes, I am the one who put all the money down, I am the leader, I did everything for this house, doesn't mean that you're not hogging all the credit. He also said that every decision is made as a group, which isn't true and we know this because of the Blueface music video where a lot of members of the Hype House were offered this opportunity to be in this music video and Thomas just rejected it on behalf of everyone saying that they weren't going to take this opportunity because they weren't going to do anything for free. The other members that were offered this opportunity were then informed that Thomas had rejected this opportunity and they were really confused because they were so down to do this. They didn't know that this opportunity had been rejected for all of them. In Daisy's video, she also said that members of the Hype House had also gone up to him and said I think this is a really good opportunity for the house for the for our brands for everyone here 
And he just said no because we're not going to make any money. But either way, Thomas rejected this opportunity on behalf of other members of the Hype House who wanted to do this. So clearly, not every decision is made as a group. Thomas admitted that he had like a group meeting with all the members of the Hype House and they collectively, I guess, agreed to unfollow and block Daisy. But he also said that he never kicked Daisy out of the Hype House and that was a decision made on her own. Every person in that house had unfollowed her and blocked her on social media and knew the self-branded leader were not giving her a voice or an opportunity to do anything. You were ignoring her and you were making sure that the other members were ignoring her too. A few members of the Hype House, I'm, I'm assuming they're all in the Hype House. A lot of them I actually fucking never have heard of ever. But I'm assuming they're all in the Hype House and that a lot of them have just said that Daisy has also had a history of like mistreating women and it's like ironic how she's come out with this and like how the main message of her video is just like don't mistreat people and like you know I feel like I was stepped on because I'm a woman and all that and there were eye messages leaked out that made Daisy look really bad and it did basically support the argument that she doesn't really support women but then one of her friends came out and said it's so like it was really snaky of that person to leak only that part of the messages so her friend posts the like actual full screenshot of it. Silver, how dare you say that Daisy is disrespectful towards women. You are one of the most disrespectful people I've ever come across in my entire life. Truly mean hearted. I don't understand why you won't show the rest of the text messages between you and Daisy. Like where you were telling her that she means nothing and all of the rest of what you said. So I'm just gonna go ahead and post those next and maybe stop trying to scrape and find information to just take Daisy down because there is none. So don't call yourself a co-founder if you're not gonna be here all the time putting effort. Tell me what you've done for the house. You lay in bed all day, miss. I get shit done. Almost every day I ask Thomas what I can do to help and he tells me work on my own brand. No one even knows you're a part of this so you had to compensate and put co founder in your body. That's how little you do. Why are you avoiding my question? Is that because you can't even name anything? Sad. My videos get millions of views on that. Oh no, she's already lost by mentioning that. My videos get millions of views on the high post. What do yours get? Oh fucking Jesus Christ. Whoever this corporate person is, she is so unlikable. I'm there for Thomas when he's going through shit. I coordinate maids and the trash guy to come so you can take your entitlement out of here. You only get views and likes because you're provocative and show your ass and tits. I have self-respect. That's pretty disrespectful to women is it not I just like hate the mo like the whole thing on TikTok about how women are getting too comfortable and that all these dancers are only getting views because they're showing off their arts and tits like you're really going to say that they're not allowed to show off their body that belongs to them you're really gonna say that they're not allowed to dance the way that they want to dance? And the thing is, a lot of the time, they dance the exact same way as somebody as, say, Charlie D'Amelio, and they wear the exact same clothes as someone as, say, Charlie D'Amelio. The only difference is they're more curvy, they have boobs, and they have ass. Literally, the only difference is they happen to have a more feminine figure. So I'm just really not vibing with the kind of about how girls on TikTok are being, like, too slutty when they're dancing and shit. Like, get over yourselves, honestly. Daisy also made a TikTok with Thomas's ex-girlfriend where they're just basically hanging out and dancing a little bit. Thomas commented disgusting and then another member of the Hype House commented that's low. How do I? Okay. I think Thomas just should have kept his mouth shut because he's not thriving right now. He's in the wrong and everyone's like exposing him. If your ex-best friend and your ex-girlfriend are coming together and vibing, maybe you both mistreated them and they're not vibing with you. Also, the other fucking person, I don't know who it is. How can you say two friends hanging out is low simply because they happen to be previously connected to this or previously have a relationship to Thomas, but Thomas not giving credit to not only Daisy, but the other co-founders, Thomas making every decision on behalf of the Hype House, Thomas controlling all the social media and emails, and Thomas essentially kicking Daisy out of the Hype House, that's not low? Daisy's friend who basically came out and exposed the real screenshots also said this We showed up to go make content in the backyard and grab some of Daisy's stuff that was still there We went in the backyard to film some TikToks before we left and Cova went and locked all the doors while waving and flipping us off Our keys were locked in the house We tried to go around and go through the garage so we could leave but there were padlocks on the gates So we had to call the police to come get us Okay Right. So overall, Thomas seems to be in a very sticky situation, but he was the one who put himself there by being a piece of shit. I guess that's just kind of what you can expect from an ex-Team Tim member, but what do I know? So Mason Disick, who is the son of Courtney and Scott, he went on an Instagram live and he was asked who his favorite, I guess, makeup artist is. And he said it was James Charles. And he also said that Jeffree Star just seems like spoiled and just bratty and just not a very good person. Keep in mind that this boy is 10 years old and Jeffree Star found out about this via a tweet that he wasn't added in, a tweet that had about 12 likes. So, 
one wonders how he came across that tweet if he didn't search his name up. He decided to respond to this tweet and attack a 10 year old boy by saying, I had $500 in my bank account six years ago. Maybe he's confused with his own privilege versus mine being self-made. Hopefully his father can educate him soon. The amount of money he had in his bank account six years ago or whatever the fuck has um, changed depending on which story you've listened to him tell. How has that got to do with anything? So because you had $500 in your bank account six years ago, you're not spoiled now? Because you had $500 in your bank account six years ago, you're a perfectly good person who didn't unfollow somebody for wanting space in your warehouse for a charity? You didn't say all those racist things? You don't treat your fans badly? You didn't make Kobe Bryant's death all about you? So because you had $500 six years ago, none of what he says applies to you now. You also might want to take into account that if a 10 year old Kar Jenner kid is calling you spoiled, maybe you want to look at yourself a bit more instead of attacking a 10 year old and calling him spoiled. I mean, I'm sure he is. He's the son of Courtney and Scott. He is very privileged, but you do not attack this 10 year old for calling you spoiled because clearly if this child thinks that you are acting bratty, chances are you are acting very, very bratty. So Sephora, for those of you who don't know, apparently they went onto a conference call with all their workers and basically said, you're all fired and then just went off. One of their ex employees came out and tweeted, Sephora ruined our lives, lol, point blank period. Great conference call guys. Thanks for hanging up and not letting anyone speak. Thanks for breaking all our hearts, but beauty stands together, right? Somebody else tweeted, guess which company just fired all part-time employees over a mass conference call, which they told us about 30 minutes in advance. Actually, don't bother guessing, it was Sephora. Sephora also said that they were going to be taking care of their employees during this time, and they were also pushing for employees, part-time included, to go to, I don't know what this word is, but it's aesthetician school. It's a school and they basically promised them that they were going to pay for it after they finished the course. And so these workers are now one without a job that they thought they were going to keep and two presumably in debt due to the extra expense of the class is what school so that's great sephora is thriving um basically people are just encouraging people to buy from places like ulta instead of sephora because sephora is obviously not that great of a brand kim kardashian's been under a little bit of heat recently because she's been selling very very expensive crisis kits to profit from the coronavirus the kits range from 60 dollars to 250 dollars and contain the mask produced by 3m along with varying quantities of emergency blankets ponchos rubber gloves Loves emergency food and water in the hopes of making preparation a household essential. Can people please stop trying to exploit and profit off of this virus? Because the people who actually need these kits are the most vulnerable and probably can't afford them. You are preying on the vulnerable and it's just not- you're Kim Kardashian, you literally don't need to profit from this. You have millions and millions and millions of dollars in your bank account. You don't need more money made from exploiting the vulnerable. So Ellen DeGeneres has basically been, I guess, recently exposed for being not the greatest person and basically lying about being nice and sweet and whatever. And one of like the main things of this, I'm gonna get to Nikki tutorials in a bit, but first of all, Kevin T. Porter tweeted out, right now we all need a little kindness, you know, like Ellen DeGeneres always talks about. She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with one of the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean and I'll match everyone with $2 to LA Food Bank. One of the replies was, I can't vouch for anything being real if it didn't happen to me, but this is as close as I can get. My friend who worked at Real Food Daily says, Ellen came in and dined and when she saw her server had a chip nail Ellen called management and tried to get her fired and Chris Farah the person who the previous tweet was talking about came out and said I worked at Real Food Daily served her and Porsche at brunch she wrote a letter to the owner and complained about my chip nail polish not that it was on her plate but just that it was chipped on my hand I worked all closing the night before and this was the next morning almost got me fired another one is A she has a sensitive nose so anyone must chew gum from a bowl outside her office before talking to her and if she thinks she smelled that day you have to go home and shower B a new staff member was told every day she picks someone different to really hate. It's not your fault, just suck it up for the day and she'll be mean to someone else the next day. They didn't believe it, but it ended up being entirely true. See, when she's in a bad mood, staff members were highly encouraged by upper management to go into her office and do bits to cheer her up. D, she cares about animals, which is good, but so sensitive. For example, if someone tried to show a funny viral video and way in the distance, a barely audible dog is barking, she'll scream at you and say, can't you hear that animal is in distress? Why did you show me this? E, if she doesn't like the monologue somebody wrote that day, she'll drop it on the floor and say, I'm not reading one word of this. Lastly, if somebody wrote a joke with the phrase, it's like pulling a rabbit out of the hat and she screamed at them, do you know how painful that would be to the rabbit? Somebody else said, there was that time when she bullied Mariah Carey into admitting she was pregnant and basically what happened was Mariah Carey went onto the Ellen show and Ellen 
basically tried to make her drink alcohol to prove that it wasn't true or something. And weeks later she had a miscarriage and that's just so unfortunate and something that she didn't need to go through publicly. And it's kind of manipulative and scummy that Ellen would try and like get her to drink alcohol to- I don't- Mm. Especially because it's Ellen, right? You're gonna put this on TV. Don't do that. Another one is Karen Kilgariff was her head writer for five years until the writer's strike. When Karen couldn't cross the picket line, she was fired and Ellen never spoke to her again. Josh said, who boy, I have a few. A friend of mine told me about a custodian she knew who was fired because he was slightly autistic and forgot he wasn't allowed to look or speak to her and he loved greeting everyone. Another friend of mine was at a PA on her show and when Russell Brand came into the employee break area to chat with the crew and hang out, Ellen came in and got mad at him saying he didn't have to interact with these people that's why guests have their own area backstage. And finally, another friend of mine worked on Arrested Development season 4 and said that they were having to find workarounds for any scenes with Portia in them because Ellen wouldn't let her go to work most days. She shared my entire culture for our staple food source, seal meat. We are Inuit and live in the Arctic where barely any edible plants grow. My sister worked for the Ellen show for two years. This is from her. I saw Ellen in the hallway every day and would say hello and she never once said hello back. She wouldn't smile. She wouldn't even acknowledge me at all for two seasons. I was working on a show at Warner Brothers that was next to our stage. It was our showrunner's 50th birthday, caterer grilling steaks outside the special fancy lunch. Ellen sent somebody over to demand they stop as she didn't eat meat. She's the worst. I have another food one. She polices her crew's lunch orders. Nobody's allowed to eat fish, etc. They would come and hide in our stage to eat what they wanted away from her. I ran out of time, so for the Nikki tutorials thing, I'm just going to play some clips of her basically saying that Ellen DeGeneres isn't the nicest person and she is obviously trying to hold a lot back and not make this a whole drama-y thing, but there's clearly a lot more that she wants to say about Ellen DeGeneres, but she's just trying to be more professional. Who was it about Ellen DeGeneres? Um. <laughs> Ik zeg dat er een groot verschil is tussen uh, de wereld draait door en Ellen. <laughs> en dan uh, geef ik jullie het positieve handje. Want? Oh, punt. Nou. <laughs> nou, dat wil ik meer weten. Nou, ja, er zijn bepaalde... Kijk, bijvoorbeeld, het is wel heel leuk dat jij wel vooraf hallo komt zeggen en zo. <laughs> het is bij Ellen in ieder geval, het is, wat ik heb meegemaakt hier en uh, andere landen, is dat gewoon een hele andere wereld. Het zit gewoon iets anders. Afstandelijke killer... Uh... Tikje. <laughs> Het is wel echt dat ik zo'n podium mocht betreden, is natuurlijk de grootste eer, laat ik dat voorop stellen. Maar het is wel een andere wereld, Eurovisie. <laughs> so yeah, she's clearly just not the best person. And that's all I had for today. Please like and subscribe, I need numbers for validation.